in the name of God the power of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Isaiah chapter 6. And it happened in the year in which King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a lofty and exalted throne, and the house was full of his glory. And seraphim stood about him, each one had six wings, with two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And they cried out one to another, and they were saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the lintel above the door was lifted up by the sound of their cry, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Wretch that I am, for I am pierced to the heart. I am only human, and I have unclean lips. In the midst of a people with unclean lips, and I have seen the Lord, the Lord of hosts, with my own eyes. One of the seraphim was sent to me. In his hand he held a piece of coal which he had taken from the altar with tongs. And he touched my mouth and said, Look, this has touched your lips and will take away your iniquities and will purge away your sins. I will come back to that reading in a minute. So let's look at the two words. Mystery in worship. So worship, the Greek word for worship is proskinesis, which literally means bending the knee, kneeling down. So when we have in the New Testament, and on a number of occasions, and I will occur, I'll bring up to in a minute, um, we have an occasion when people kneel before the Lord Jesus. They are, that is proskinesis, that is worship. They worship. And this, this word is used quite often in the New Testament, and certainly in the Old Testament as well, but in the New Testament quite often, they worshipped him. It is to proskinesis, is to kneel down. And that worship, that idea of kneeling, is, is common to many, many, many traditions. So, for instance, the Chinese will have a thing called a kowtow, where they bow down. Mm. The Persians have a idea of kneeling, the Egyptians, and this came through to the Romans, and it is why we do still kneel in church, though you will all know it's all not, that we don't kneel in Pascha, we don't kneel on Sundays, because we are in the new dispensation, and we do not need to kneel when we are thinking about the anastasis, literally the resurrection meaning stand up, so we stand up. All right, Roskines. Now, mystery is, in Greek it is mysterion, and it is actually used when in the West we would say we use the word sacrament. So we talk about the mysteries, and the mysteries are obviously things like baptism, communion, uh, ordination, and so on. It is a mystery. Because an easy, de easy definition for uh, mystery is that about which we cannot cease to go on knowing more. It is something where we are groping towards the truth. We may have a pretty good idea what it's all about, but actually there is an immense depth. So for instance, if on a starry night, you look up into the sky and you see the stars. And now, of course, we know a vast amount about the galaxies and the whole of creation out there. But I will give a bet that we know a lot less than 1% of what ultimately we'll learn. And we won't know all of it, ever. So mystery is to actually encounter something where we don't know it all and we're never going to know it all. And so therefore the fundamental mystery for us is God himself. Because our understanding of God is that while we partake of his energies, that is 
his, um, his power, his dynamism, his action in the whole world, his essence is completely different. We cannot know anything of it at all. Of course, the Lord has revealed the Holy Trinity to us. So we have an idea of what is going on. So far as he is prepared to tell us. So we have the energies of God which we, we see around us. Indeed, we are part of his energies, every single one of us. We're part of his energies. And yet, his essence is unknowable. And we talk about that. And we also talk about him as eternally the same, ever existing and eternally the same. We say that in, you will have heard me say it this morning, in the liturgy, in the anaphora. Ever existing and eternally the same. And St. John of Damascus, so St. John of Damascus is a, one of the fathers, an important father. Uh, he lived from about uh, 680 through <coughs> about 750, somewhere around then. And he is a systematic theologian. He wrote, well, he wrote a number of things, but one of them is a systematic theology. And he talks about God being still in the centre of a, of a universe, a creation that is all moving. And of course, he didn't, I mean, simply, he knew that the world was round. He knew it was a ball. Um, so all the people who tell him that they all thought the earth was flat nonsense. They knew it was round. He probably thought the sun went round the earth, but, but never mind. Um, his, his understanding then is that God is the stillness in the centre of all his creation. And we shouldn't think of, of, of the idea that the whirling dervish, I have ever encountered a whirling dervish, no. Right. A whirling dervish is somebody who is a, a, a kind of Muslim, and they stand in the middle of the great big skirt of them, and they start to revolve, and they go round and round and round, and they'll do that for 15 minutes. And the idea is that the whole world is going round, but they are the stillness in the middle. Well, actually, that's not how God is. Because God is present in everything. Everywhere present, and filling all things. So the mystery is to the stillness, therefore, of God is not something in the middle of a whirling. It is something in our hearts where we can approach that stillness and make it our own. Easily said, not so easy to do. But that should be one of the things. Now, one of the difficulties for us in the West is that the West seems to have forgotten that we are actually human beings. That we are not a mind that controls everything, which happens to have a body attached, which isn't really very important. It isn't that at all. It is that, as a human person, the very physicality of what we are is of enormous importance. And that is why, when God wanted to save us, he became a human being. He took on our flesh. And that is one of the reasons why we or rejoice in the Virgin Mary, the one who gave him the flesh that we all share. Because he thought we were so important that he was prepared to come, take on our life, and become like us. Go back to the stars for a moment. And think of the whole vastness of creation. And yet the one who created it all thought we were so important that he came to save us. And did it 
by taking on our humanity. And what he has taken on is what can be saved. So there were many arguments in the church about has, it, how was it, does Christ have two natures or only one? Did he, was he only appeared to be human? But in fact, he was really divine, having sort of taken on uh, what amounts to dressing up clothes. No, he's not that. Nor is he joined to a man. No, he's not that. He has taken on everything that we are. He had to cut his toenails. So, when we think about this, we say, what has been assumed has been saved. Hence the mystery. And hence the need for us to respond to that with proskinesis, with worship. Now, does our worship actually help us to advance towards this amazing glory that is God? Now, going back to Isaiah, some interesting things. The first is, in Orthodox understanding, this is not a vision. We might have visions. If you don't eat for a long time, you're likely to have visions. <laughs> That's a different thing altogether. So when he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, he did. He saw God. He saw Jesus Christ. High and lifted up. So, that's the first thing. Where did it happen? It would appear that it happened in the temple. Because it happens inside. There's about the lintel and soul. And there's about the, the cherubim that are there around God. Flying around, saying these words, holy, 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 which we use and have used. Christians have used those words from the very beginning. And it is filled with smoke. And that is one of the reasons why we use incense. Father, oh, your sense has been anything like you. can't figure it So, this is a bit trouble, so. <laughs> so, the, the idea of, of the smoke being something which is sort of ethereal that takes you through into, uh, um, into the mist that helps you. It hides. It could do. Um, it helps. Now, if you look at another prophet, you have a very, very interesting text. And this is from Malachi. Malachi 1 11. Now, Malachi. Uh, you know, thus saith the Lord, and, and all the rest of it. And you do realise that there's a big difference between the prophets and the Lord. The prophets say, thus saith the Lord. Right? Our Lord, Jesus Christ, does not say that. He says, you have been told, but I say to you. All different. It's not, thus says the Lord. It is I say to you. And Malachi is complaining about the, the, the Jews, they're, they're, they're bad not really, they're, they're not worshipping properly and there's all sorts of problems. But then he says, because from the rising of the sun until its setting, my name has been glorified among the nations and in every place incense is being offered to my name and a pure sacrifice. For my name is great among the nations says the Lord Almighty. And that text, 1 Malachi 11, so if you remember Malachi 1, 1, 1, has been an important text for the church from the very beginning. It is that the worship does not have to take place 
in the temple because the temple comes where we are as the church in the places that we set apart in which to uh, pray and to worship. And there is a distinction here between praying and worshipping. An example of this, way of understanding this, is if, for instance, you go to, to Greece, you will find that there are two kinds of monasteries. There is a monastery called a proskinitarium, and this is a monastery where you go in order to worship. So, for instance, Jerusalem is full of proskinitaria. You don't really go there to pray. You go there to worship, to be there, of course you do pray, but you go there to worship because you're there to remember the things that have happened in that place. So, a proskinitaria is a place where, for instance, the well of the road could be thought of as a proskinitaria. It's a place where you go to bend the knee to worship God. And then there are the Isikasteria, where it is to, for praying, where they don't really want you to visit. In fact, they put you off and make it difficult. And you, you find yourself being given a cup of coffee and biscuits, and then, won't you go, must you stay? So, it is a different thing. So we pray, of course, and when we're worshipping, probably we're praying as well, because we're in the presence of God. But we are remembering and trying to develop that uh, stillness within. So, let's look at a couple of things in the New Testament. Now, there's a very interesting at the very, well not exactly the beginning, but very close to the beginning of St. Luke's Gospel. He hasn't even called all the disciples. They arrive, and it says in here, and it happened, when he was in one of the cities, and look, a man full of leprosy, seeing Jesus, fell on his face and implored him, Lord, if you want, you can cleanse me. He fell on his face, the Christians. And he asked, What do you want? And stretching out his hand, he said to him, I want to be cleansed. So in that moment, this man, you know, le leprosy is an appalling thing, you know, that you bits of you drop off from your nose, your ears and your fingers and things, so they drop off. At this moment, cleansed, bang, he is restored completely. I want be cleansed. Um, a response to the proskinesis. Now, going back to Isaiah, but notice what happens with, the, with Isaiah. He says, he is there, stumbling in the presence of God. And I said, wretch as I am, for I am pierced to the heart. I am only human, and I have unclean lips in the midst of a people with unclean lips. And I have seen the Lord, the Lord of hosts with my own eyes. Now, an experience of God, a real experience of God, very often can be unpleasant. Because in that moment, we are like Isaiah, and we see who we really are. I am human. I am a sinful man. And that is said by people who meet the Lord in the New Testament. And then one of the seraphim was sent to me. In his hand he held a piece of coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. And you know that we receive communion on a spoon. Well, at any rate, lay people receive communion on a spoon, but probably, probably once upon a time we all received. 
And the Greek word for the spoon is tongs. Because when we receive communion, we are receiving not just a coal, we are receiving the Lord himself. So the response is to want to repent, to bring that stillness and calmness into our hearts. So this passage from Isaiah is a very good one when we think about both mystery and worship. Now, going on to St John's Gospel, we can't not have St John's Gospel. Um, here we are. They don't put enough of these things in the phone, but they anyway. <laughs> Um, so remember Thomas. Now Thomas was one of the twelve, known as the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. And so the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and thrust my finger into the mark of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I shall never believe. After eight days, again the disciples were inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus comes, the door being closed, and stood in the middle and said, Peace be to you. Then he said to Thomas, Bring your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand here and thrust it into my side, and don't be an unbeliever, but a believer. Thomas replied and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus says to him, Because you have seen me, you have come to faith. Happy are those who did not see and believed. So notice he worships again and he acknowledges who he is. My Lord and my God. And likewise, uh, remember Mary Magdalene is found um, in the garden after the resurrection. Saying this, she turned around backwards and sees Jesus standing there. And she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus says to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She, thinking that it was the gardener, says to him, sir, or Lord, so the word is Kyrie. If you have taken him, tell me where you have put him, and I shall move him. Jesus says to her, Mary. She turns round and says to him in Aramaic, Rabuna, which means teacher. Jesus says to her, Do not touch me, for I have not yet gone up to the Father. Now the word there, touch me, uh, this is incidentally a translation by a Roman Catholic, they're rather keen on this, uh, don't touch me, because really what the Greek said is, do not go on clinging to me, <laughs> hands off for a bit. Yeah? Um, so that, there again, the mystery has come, the, the response to that mystery is worship. So. What are we to make of it? We go back to Isaiah. Wretch that I am, for I am pierced to the heart. Now, there is a temptation for those, it, you know, you will, you will meet such people, who say, oh, if it doesn't all happen in the Bible, then it doesn't happen. It can't be. We, we can only we can only be involved with what it said in the Bible. If it's not in the Bible, we ignore it. Right? So because, for instance, it doesn't say in the Bible that the mother of God is a Theotokos, then we can't say Theotokos. And there are other stuff. And the, indeed there was, for those of you who, who come to students, there was a time when there was a group like that, and they really were absolutely rigid about it. it has to be in the Bible. But well, when you meet such people, 
you will find that they don't really worship. They may pray, but they don't really worship because they can't, they're stuck with the word. So you must ask them three questions. First question, how much of the New Testament had St. Stephen read before he was stoned to death? How much had he read? None. None. Not a word, because none had been written. Second question. How much of the New Testament had been read by all those who were converted on the day of Pentecost? None, because none of it had been written. Third, did St. Paul, after he had written his letters, simply go round reading the letters out? Which is why tradition, so tradition is the thing that we, we carry on. Yes, the, 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 the New Testament helps us to work our tradition, of course, but the tradition is something that is there from the beginning, which the New Testament was not. So it is important to worship, so that we must all be able to say, wretch that I am, for I am pierced to the heart. I am only human. But we rejoice in the fact that Christ became human to save us. Yes, he cut his own hands. That's it. Finish. <laughs> Do you want questions? Have you got any questions? Or do you want to just think about it? They want to think about it. That's good. That's mean you'll be very good. If there isn't a question, it's all clear. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember, Father, um, what you said about the mystery and about um, stillness. Was no. it, um, it, did, it was very difficult to attain that state, I think you were saying. How do we do it? <laughs> ah. Well, we are all different. So, the first thing is not to think that there is the perfect method, and if you don't follow the perfect method, you're not going to get that. We are all different, and the way we think is different to each other. Uh, nobody knows how we think, each individual. They don't know how we think. They may think they do, but they don't. The only person who knows is God, who does know how we think and knows our thoughts. So therefore, it is finding the way for each individual, and here, uh, you know, the Orthodox are not keen on individualism, because we are saved as a group, we're not saved as individuals, we are another, we're saved, we save each other. Yep. So one can then try different things. So, uh, some will find it, will find that going to the services is the way that they are actually able to uh, dis discover this, this other voice. Um, I suppose, speaking for myself, very perhaps I did, it was once when I was at a monastery full of first week of Great Lent. Now, there are a lot of psalms anyway in the services that we do. And in the first week in Great Lent, you do the whole Psalter twice. Some tell me that you could get through the whole Psalter in two hours. I didn't believe it. That takes longer than that. Try it. Next time we hear so um, it, it takes it takes quite a long time. 
and you say the whole sort of time in the first two and a half days, and you say it in the next two and a half days. So that is a vast number of psalms, so many psalms, that so much word that actually you, you sort of can't cope with it. Or I couldn't. And then you realise that underneath there is a quiet voice going on in silence because the words just flow over you. So that's one way. The other way is to always try and, and think that um, allow yourself to be in the presence of God, whatever you're doing. Um, there was a song, was it called, that you were always on my mind? <laughs> well, that song is sort of penitential, isn't it? It has a sort of penitential element to it, so it's it actually quite, quite good from a Christian point of view. So if you can say, you were always on my mind, for God, I think you are starting to get closer to that that stillness within yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it is that whatever you do, even you know, you have you have just been cut up on the motorway, and you're perhaps not as as calm as you might be, <laughs> you nevertheless have been able to say, but you are always on the motorway. <laughs> <laughs> So it, 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 is, it is that, yes? Now, th there would be those who would say, well, yes, well, of course, the great thing is if you say the Jesus prayer and so on. And I'm not saying that that is not a good idea, but for some people, that can become very bad. Father Barnabas, my spiritual father, used to say, well, the, what you've got to remember about the Jesus prayer is it's the short hand. First, you've got to learn the long hand. Have you learned the long hand? Well, what's the long hand? Well, the long hand is all the services of the church. Do you know them all well? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> right? It's a short hand. Use it sometime. <laughs> so, it, 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 it's, there we are. Yes. You have to find your way. Mm. Group. Always. But she was always on my mind. <laughs> so. Um, when you say that Jesus always, um, Knows your thoughts and stuff. There's also Mary now, or did we don't know that? <laughs> My voice also just went like it. Like we don't. We don't. We don't know. That. I mean, what we we she is right. We're mm -hmm. thinking about her at this at this moment because we're coming up, working up for the dormition of Great Feast Day on the 15th of August. So. Um, we know that she is with the Lord. We know that she is in heaven. We know that she prays for us and uh, she makes herself known to us. Uh, some people a lot, some people not very much, some people perhaps not at all. It will vary. Um, she is interceding for us because that's what she does. That's, she ponders these things in her heart. Whether she knows our thoughts, I think, is a different thing. But God does. Yeah. Right. On the... On the... I want to say a few, a few words about the importance of worship. Uh, I noticed something, and my father Stephen spoke, I, just remember it. Because now many people come to orthodoxy. Well, some of, some of us are being born in orthodox countries and people are placed very young and they don't turn their attention to this stuff. But the people who come now, um, I, I usually ask them what brings them to orthodoxy. And when they come and see the worship services of orthodox church, especially those who come from the evangelical world, uh, the modern evangelical world, they usually say, now I know what I'm missing. It's exactly this kind of worship, it's completely dissolved mm -hmm. in the Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, and this is immediately turned their attention to the worship, and they are completely 
uh, taking it immediately, mm -hmm. which is absolutely amazing. And how important is the, the worship and the, um, bringing the people together and do the services and all? It's absolutely amazing. And another thing, um, during the baptism, um, this is observation and, and like a question. The gospel reading in the baptism. Yeah. Uh, it says I tried to find it, but uh, connection here is I think it's in Matthew. In Matthew, uh, when it says all authority is being given to me, go and uh, teach all the world, baptizing the people, and the end finished this way. And some of people, some of them worshipped him, some of them doubted. This is Christ Himself said that. I think it was Matthew. 28. 28, yeah, it's at the end. It's uh, literally the uh, baptism gospel reading. And uh, you usually it's a very interesting fact when you do the baptism, there is people, there is a person who you will baptize, who will worship Lord, literally in front of you. There is a guest who will worship the Lord when you set up. You can see it in your eyes, but there is also a people who don't. Don't feel that they have to do it. The people who will come to church, they will visit and will go. But there is a people who, uh, and it's exactly, it's a, it's a like a, it's an image of what really happens during this baptism. I, I always, it, it's a very, it's a very strange. So you see in front of you people, the baptized man, newly baptized, his close people who will worship the Lord. Um, but there is also people who never worship the Lord, who simply sit down and um, are disconnected to this moment. So the worship is like a special, special moment, special, special space, like the like all this stuff with the incense. You, uh, I, I, in the in the past, I, I had an idea that the incense is kind of, or this is how I've been told that, like you you pray and your prayer go up in heaven with incense. But now I found it more like you creating a special place, special, special <coughs> space, not place, special space mm -hmm. with this incense, with the smell, with the atmosphere. This is what bring uh, into it, and it's create a worship space. You can be outside. You can simply sit down and say, "Oh, this, this is by my smell. Uh, where did you find it?" But it actually can bring you. Uh, to this special worship moment, mm -hmm. which is being given again. But this gospel reading for the baptism, it's always amazing, it's always like that. There is a people, especially the person who will, uh, is baptized and that close people, they will worship the Lord. They'll make the sound of the cross, some of them will kneel, he will, it, it's atmosphere, but some of them will simply stay and do nothing. They're outside. <laughs> it's a, it's a amazing. Is it in the matter? I think is that. Yeah, yeah, I can read it to you. Yeah, yeah. And Jesus approached and spoke. So, and the eleven disciples. Notice yeah, the eleven, yeah. because one of them has gone. Joseph of Galilee, the mountains which Jesus had commanded them. And when they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. And Jesus approached and spoke to them. All authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. So go and make disciples of all the Gentiles, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to keep everything I have commanded you. And look, I am with you all the days yeah. after the consummation of the age. It's absolutely amazing little, little thing, isn't it? Christ is on front of you, Lord himself on front of you. Some people worship him, some people doubt him. Mm. And notice, incidentally, that we work with all of us. Yeah. So, the all of what we are. So it isn't a matter of all going on in our head. We taste mm. things, we smell things, we exactly. hear things, we touch things, we eat things. It's a yeah. It's a it's a special space. <laughs> special space. Right. Good. I to say, the first time I came to the Orthodox Church, John and Anna, or I think it was just John and. Claire, and I thought, I likely walk out before this starts. Before this starts, so certainly maybe before it finishes, but it absolutely overwhelmed me. And I think I think now that a lot of the um Protestant church, it's very diluted. It was such a holy space. It's so thank you, Father. Yeah. You know, that was that yeah. was a defining moment in my life, definitely. Well, they were. Mm-hmm.
Raj old looking extremely. <laughs> 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 